This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 6.2.2.4, which is configuring IP version 4 static and default routes. And this is a part of the Routing and Switching Essential Cisco Network and Academy curriculum. Now, in this lab, guys, we've got a network now that has uh, three routers, and each one of those routers has its own separate local area network or LAN connected to it. So remember back from our previous labs and classes when we were talking about routing concepts last week, when we have a router, it only knows about the stuff that is directly plugged into it. So for instance, router one right there. It only knows about the networks that is connected to it and plugged into it somehow. So router one knows about 172.31.1.0 slash 25. So it knows how to get about to get to all of this stuff right here. <laughs> router one also knows how to get to router two because it's directly connected to it, which is the 172.31.1.192 forward slash 30 network. R1 doesn't know how to get to anything else. So for instance, let's say PC1 right here. When it sends something out to PC2, okay, it's gonna send it to switch one, then it's gonna send it to router one because router one's its default gateway, right? So it sends it to router one from PC1 and says, hey, I need to get to PC2. R1 is gonna check in its routing table, which we can view with show IP route, and it's gonna say, I have no idea where that is because it only knows about this network and this one. It's gonna say, I don't know where 172.31.0. whatever PC2 is into, but it's in this network. It doesn't know about that network at all, so it's gonna drop the packet. Routers are only concerned with forwarding a packet to the next place as quickly as possible. So we have to do something to kind of intervene, and one way is static routing. So static routing, I have to actually put a manual route into R1 to let it know how to get up here to PC2 or this whole network on the other side of R2 and this whole network on the other side of R3 and the network that R2 and R3 share, okay? It's not just going to send it to R2 to see what happens unless we make it. Now, we will learn in some uh, later labs how to dynamically share the networks that each router knows about, but right now we're gonna tackle it with static routing, okay? So let's look at our directions here. So in our directions, we have got, um, we've got uh, in our directions, examine the network and evaluate the need for static routing. And that's kind of what we did. So R1 does not know how to get to three different networks, which is between R2 and R3 the other side of R3 and the other side of R2. R2 does not know how to get to, uh, let's see, R2 doesn't know how to get to um, R1's LAN and R3's LAN. R3 does not know how to get to R2's local area network, the wide area network between R1 and R2 and the local area network that is on the other side of R1. Okay, so we got quite a few routes that we need to really put in here to get into in connectivity. So let's look at these different methods in this terminology here. It says configure a recursive route on R1, okay, to get to all these different uh, places. Okay, it says why does a recursive static route require two routing table lookups? And we're going to look at what that actually means. Okay, so we're going to go to R1. So I'm going to zoom in here. Zoom out just a tad. Okay, so we're going to zoom into R1. Zoom into R1 here. Okay, I need to move this over so we can look at what actual networks we don't know about here. Okay, and on R1, pull this up. All right, so on R1. And then go to configuration mode. And our command for a static route is IP route. Okay. Now we'll see the ending change with recursive or directly attached. Okay. So IP route, we don't know how to get to what networks. Let's tackle the uh, 
the local area network on the other side of S2. So we need to type in 172.31.0.0. And remember, a slash 24 subnet max is 255.255.255.0. Okay. That command encompasses the actual command, IP route. It's always the same. This is the destination network that you're trying to reach and the destination subnet mask that you're trying to reach. The ending is the method, okay? Now they ask you to use the recursive method. The recursive method means the next place, or I call it the next hop IP address method, the next place that it's gonna to get to when it sends something from R1. So really with static routing, you really need to look at your diagram or your topology of your network to be able to tell where it's flowing. So. Let's say again, like we said before, PC1 sends something out to PC2, okay? It's going to go to switch one, it's going to go to R1, and now R1 does not have a route, until we put it in here, how to get up here to PC2. So to get to that network, we got to know what the network address is, and we have to know what the, uh, the destination network address is and what the destination subnet mask is. We got that in our command, right? But now we have to choose a method. So when it leaves R1, what is the next IP address that it's gonna get to, okay? So we send it to R1, we're going to R2 to get to this network up here, right? So what is R2's IP address for serial 000? Because that's the next place it's gonna know how to send it to. Okay, and if we look in our diagram up here, serial 000 on R2 is right here, 172.31.1.193. Okay, again, because it's sending it from PC1 to R1, R1 is going to contact and send it to R2 right there. And now, once it gets to R2, R2 knows about that 172.31.0.0 network, so it's going to deliver it, right? But we got to get it to the next place as quickly as possible, okay? So we want to put that in there, and this, this is all on one line. Let me expand it out a little bit so you can see that. This is all on one line here, okay? So that gets us to that network. What other network don't we know about? Well, we don't know about the 172. Again, this is all from R1's perspective. You have to really change your lens about where you're looking at it from. So 31.1.196, we don't know how to get there. A slash 30, remember, is 255.255.255.252, okay? Remember back to our subnetting, or you can look at a chart uh, online to help you out there, a subnetting chart, or like a subnet mask. Uh, slash notation to decimal chart. Okay, so let's look at it this way, okay? If R1 again needs to send something out to this network right here, using the recursive method, where are we gonna send it to next? We are going to send it to R2 again. So to, even to get over here, we gotta go through R2. What's the next IP address it's gonna get to? The same exact one, S000 on R2, okay? So 172.31.1.193, okay? Lastly, we have to type in that command again. There's one more network we don't know about, and that is 172.31.1.128, which is on the other side of R3. All right, so we need to create a route for that, 172.31.1.128. Okay, we need to type in our subnet mask here. Now, remember back again, so if we got a slash 26, okay, remember back to our subnetting, a slash 24, and it's all about where you move your decimal place, right? So remember, we need to uh, be able to convert that, and a slash 26, remember when you move your decimal, is a 192. So if a slash, if a slash 24 is 255.255.255.0, a slash 25 is 255.255.255.128, then a slash 26 is gonna be 255.255.255.192. Now again, I know this network is way over here on the other side of R3, but you gotta look at this from the lens of R1's eyes. Where am I gonna send it to next? Still R2's next top IP address of the same exact one. Okay, 172.31.1.193. So the way we got our network set up, it just happens to be when you use the recursive, and remember, this is called the recursive method. So that changes what you want to put here at the end. And if you do the IP route command and you get to the end here and you hit a question mark, 
there's a couple different options you can see. The forwarding router's address, that's what we're using, right? Where are we sending it to? But the next one, we're going to learn a different method. So I can erase this right here. Okay, so we got our three for our one. Okay, we now know how to get to all those places. But you got to look at this again through every router's eyes that only handles R1. Okay, so in our directions here, it says configure directly attached static networks. Or first it says test connectivity to the R2 LAN and ping the IP addresses of PC2 and PC3. Why were you unsuccessful? Remember, a ping Yes, it goes from PC1 to PC2. That is successful. But a ping has to return. R2 doesn't know how to get back. Okay, So it knows how to get one way, but it's like booking an airline, but only booking a one-way ticket. You, you didn't book a round trip, right? So how does the directly attached static method differ? So that's what we're going to look at. So here for R2, we actually only need two static routes. And begin, again, that's because R2 is directly attached here is directly attached here between R2 and 3 and it's directly already attached here or directly connected here between R2 and R1. So we only need, we do not know about this one here and we do not know about this one here, okay? So we need to enter in two static routes on R2. So our two commands here are gonna be IP route IP route 172, let's handle going to R1's LAN or local area network, okay? And slash 25 is 255.255.255.128. And now the directly, or sorry, the, uh, yeah, directly attached method, I always call the local exit interface. So the recursive method, I looked at it as the next hop IP address of the other router that I'm going to. But this one, okay, when I leave R2, okay, if I'm trying to leave R2 and I need to get to this network down here on the other side of R1, what interface am I going to send it out of on R2? And for that, I'm going to send it out of serial 000. So that is actually still on R2. We're still referencing what we have on R2 here. Okay, so I'm actually going to type in serial 000 there. Okay, so anytime I need to reach R1, I'm going to send it out of serial 000 on R2. Okay, and you can disregard that right there. All right, now the next one I don't know about is 172.31.1.1. Move this over a little bit. 128. Okay. Again, this is handling getting to R3's LAN over here. And the subnet mask was 255.255.255.192 for slash 26. And what interface do I need to send it out of on R2 to get it to R3's LAN? Well, every time I'm going to send it out of serial 001 on R2. So you can see here we got to change that to serial 001 for that network. Okay, and this is using the directly attached method. Now you may be saying, why are there two methods to start with? Well, if you don't control, let's look at back the recursive method, which means you gotta put the next top IP address. When we did that with R1, what if I didn't know what the IP address of R2 is, right? What if that was like an internet service provider? I wouldn't be able to tell it to go to a specific IP address. I would only be able to tell it what interface to go out of on my own. What if R2's IP address changes? Then that makes your default or your sorry your static route null and void at that point so we have to make sure that we are doing things correctly um you know based off the information we know so that's kind of why there's two different methods but both methods will work okay now let's go back to our directions again because we got that part now we got to handle router three now this one we're going to do an even further different way or method and it may or may not be the best way to handle this particular lab but it is does show you what to think about when you hear default route so we've heard recursive we know to think next top ip address we've heard directly attached we know to think local exit interface now we hear default route i want you to understand that every time you hear default route you need to think all zeros and i'll show you why so on r3 Okay, we're only gonna, we don't know about, uh, let's see, how many networks here do we got or have that we don't know about? We've got, uh, 
We've got, we don't know about this one between R2 and R1. We don't know about this one on the other side of R2. And we don't know about this one over here on the other side of R1. So we would think we would need three static routes, correct? That would be going off the methods we've been using, but this is a totally different method. So in this one, we're gonna do IP route, but it says do a, a default route. What a default route does is the way a router looks at it, it says the command is 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 .0 0.0.0.0.0. So you can see why I said think all zeros, right? But it basically says any network that I don't know about, it could be anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's R1's LAN or R2's LAN or some other router that is in the future to be added. It's going to send it to the same place, no matter what it knows about. Because remember, a router's thoughts is to get it to the next place as soon as possible. And it doesn't care if the packet delivers to the end or not. You know, we want it to, but a router's thought process is to send it somewhere else and hopefully they know how to handle it, right? That's kind of what our static routing has been. We, we sent something from R1 to R2 because R2 knew about it, but we didn't know it knew about it until now. We had to manually enter it in there. So here we put IP route all zeros for both the destination network address and the destination subnet mask and therefore it is going to handle every packet that it doesn't know about so no matter if it's r2's lan or one's lan the wide area network that r2 and r1 share it's going to send it to and then here we can use the directly attached method or the recursive method okay so it tells us to use what method here um really doesn't tell us which one to use uh, so we can just let's try one and see all right so let's uh, do every time we don't know about something we send it out of s001 because that's the one r3 is going to be sending it out of no matter what for this network right so it just happens to kind of work out that way too because the way our network is laid out i couldn't do that on r2 right anytime i don't know about something send it out of S000. Couldn't do that because what about over here? It's going to send it out of this one every single time. Sometimes we need to send it over here. So with R3, everything exits this way, right? All the time. So we, we can do that. Okay. So that is the reason we are able to do that here. Okay. And we have down here 60 out of 60 so we got 100 and we should have end-to-end -end connectivity as well. So if we ping from PC3 to PC2. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay, it says fail. Let's refire it. Boom, we got successful, right? Um, even if we try that again, let's say do from PC1 to 2. Okay, successful. PC3 to 2. PC1 to 3. We're getting successful each and every time. So we do have full to end to end connectivity from each one based off of those static routes. So the things I want you to take away from this lab, recursive method means next hop IP address or the next hop it's going to. Okay. The directly attached method means what local exit interface am I going to send it out of to reach that destination network and default route think all zeros because that's always the same for the destination network and the destination subnet mask because we don't it accounts for basically everything it's like an all-encompassing route uh, but you do have to make sure that you use the recursive or directly attached method with that according to what the directions say or according to how your network is laid out that is also important and make sure you're thinking about each and every static route in terms of what routers lens are you looking at it from what routers viewpoint because it changes every single route all right so that concludes uh 6.2.2.4 um and be sure to watch the next one which will cover ipv6 routes